podcast of flying over the Grand Canyon is uh, its own set of challenges. It's um, first of all one of the seven wonders of the world so you're staring at that all the time just breathtaking beauty everywhere you look and uh, ultimately you have to keep flying the helicopter the whole time and be on top of things. We fly in some of the most regulated airspace in the United States and uh, uh, we also have a lot of weather challenges just with the, uh, the heat rising out of the canyon. Uh, the canyon makes it, has its own weather system so it's making its own weather all the time and we're reacting to it constantly. Every morning we do a weather briefing so we have a little bit of an idea of what to expect out there but season to season it changes constantly day to day minute to minute so we are always having to stay flexible and react to changing conditions. Um, the north rim has a higher elevation than the south rim so it's its own weather system there just you know 18 miles away on the other side. Yeah, the EC-130 uh, B-4 is a fantastic helicopter to fly as a pilot. Um, it's designed around uh, tours, so we have fantastic views out the front and the sides. Back seat have a uh, stadium view, a stadium seating view looking out over the shoulders of the people behind them. There aren't any bad seats. Uh, as uh, it's an extremely reliable helicopter, has a great safety record in the industry, and it also has the quiet technology with that Fenestron tail rotor, so um, we're not being as loud over the canyon for the visitors and the wildlife. So Grand Canyon has its own weather system. It is changing rapidly by the minute, um, day to day. So we are constantly having to react to uh, changing conditions. Uh, makes piloting the helicopter challenging and uh, it keeps us from uh, getting bored, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I originally grew up in Michigan, so uh, I came out here back in 2003 just to be closer to the mountains and the desert and have a more mild climate. And uh, part of the reason was Grand Canyon. I have spent a lot of time below the rim, uh, running, climbing, uh, hiking, doing a lot, of, a lot of crazy adventures in the canyon. Flying helicopters was always on the radar, something I always wanted to do. Never really thought it was possible. Uh, my wife kind of urged me to look into it more and more and uh, finally just kind of took the step and started flight training in Prescott, Arizona at Guidance Aviation. Uh, 
did my flight training, worked as an instructor for a while, built hours, didn't want to leave Northern Arizona, so I uh, came up here and applied at Maverick and uh, thankfully got a job here. I always thought that I knew Grand Canyon. I've spent a lot of time below the rim. <laughs> and I started flying over the canyon and it was mind blowing to uh, just, to really finally realize the vastness of Grand Canyon. There is no other way to see Grand Canyon than to fly over it. I am very lucky to get to interact with this landscape like I do from the ground or from the air um, and I'm aware of that. I'm definitely a doer. I like to be out having adventures. I wouldn't call myself a risk taker. Um, I don't fly helicopters for an adrenaline rush. I fly it because it's so relaxing. I get to leave everything on the ground and focus on flying and um, that's one of the best things about it. Yeah, obviously flying over the canyon is uh, pretty amazing. Um, we get to look at it all day long. I'm flying a helicopter, it's just great. Um, but I, I have to say that one of my favorite parts of the job is just seeing people's reaction to the canyon, especially when we first go off that edge. Um, it's just fun to see the difference in how people react to it. You know, I'll have a, um, an 80 year old granny that um, is swearing and in excitement and um, I've got big tough guys that are squealing you know like a little kid um, in fear you know it's just it's just great to see the diversity there in people's reactions.